Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's exciting to be together again with East End United Methodist Church. We have a few things going on that we want to bring to light. Uh, but just a reminder, we have a series of QR codes on the back. And some of them are to check in and you can um, put prayer concerns, register, any, register yourself, prayer concerns. Uh, there's also um, a way to do our online giving and uh, a few other things that are going on. We, I don't know if you've noticed, but we have a new website and it looks really good. And we're so grateful for all the hard work that was put into that and on it, is some information about the building project, um, an update on there, uh, lots of really good information on there, so there's an opportunity for that. And also, this is Welcome to Ministry Sunday, where we celebrate the work of this church in all the ways that we serve one another and serve our community and serve God. And one thing I really want to highlight this morning is one of those ministries, a newer one, is our partnership with Warner Elementary um, that is nearby, East End, UMC anyway, and we are partnering with them to help them with attendance and behavior to help their, their um, kids be successful. And one of the ways that they're doing that is they're throwing parties for attendance. And so they've asked us to supply some supply the parties so um and also so this first not first we've done a couple things already but we are collecting for a special party bubbles and double bubble gum <laughs> and they're always in the need for belts and wet wipes um, and also Kroger gift cards to help fund the parties they're doing one every week and we are partnering with a couple other churches in the area to to keep momentum going in that neighborhood school. So just wanted to bring that to light to you. And David Bone has an announcement for us this morning as well. Good morning. As Carrie said, it's uh, Ministry Sunday. Last Sunday, we expressed our gratitude for our church, and today we're celebrating all various ministries that spring forth from that gratitude and enrich our lives and the lives of many in our community. You'll notice 38 ribbons on the center aisle, and each one of these represents one of our ministries of our church. I want to thank Laura Scott, my co-chair for Gratitude and Ministry Sundays for making those ribbons because as you can tell that she did a great job in, in putting those together. Last week we wrote expressions of gratitude and we placed them on this round table at the front creating a living version of our Capital Funds Campaign logo. Today we're going to add those ribbons to this table to symbolically show our connection to, to the gratitude and to our ministry. Our gratitude forms the base on which our ministry is are built. So today, while the choir sings the anthem, Dietz Osborne and Jessica Dragonetti are gonna read the list of ministries that are printed in your bulletin. When they are read, I know that 30 to 38 of you are gonna hear the call of God, <laughs> and you're gonna to go to the center aisle and take one or two of these ribbons. They've got little sticky, tacky stuff, you can leave that on the pew. We'll collect that later if it doesn't come off with the ribbon. And bring one of those forward where Cheryl Stone and I will be at the table to take those uh, from you. Uh, the ribbons don't have to be brought in any particular order. Uh, it's very random, it's however God leads you. So I'm hoping that God's gonna call some of you to, to bring one of those ribbons forward. Um, by the end of the anthem, I hope you'll see how built on the foundation of our gratitude, our ministries create layer on layer of service to each other and outreach to our community. Thank you, David. It is exciting. Sometimes we don't always see the big picture of what all the parts in the body of Christ are doing. And this Sunday we have an opportunity to take a good look at that and remember how God is working amongst us on ministry Sunday. So with that in mind, let us 
prepare our hearts and minds to worship God together this morning. Would you rise in body or in spirit and join me in the call to worship? I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick. I was in prison, and you visited me, just as you do for the least of these, you do for me. Will you join us in singing hymn number 126 in your red hymnal? Sing praise to God who reigns above.
Will you join with me in your heart as we confess together our sins? Patient Lord, we know that you call us to service, but we often feel inadequate. We love to make excuses for not doing something or doing something only half-heartedly. Remind us again of your loving and guiding presence. Forgive us when we stumble and falter. Turn us again to you, serving joyfully and confidently. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved ones, you are the salty people, those who bring flavor to living. Your spirit of love and confidence gives hope to others. Remember that the Lord is always with you. Amen. At this time, children ages three to second grade can join Joanna for their worship experience. Congregational care. Welcome team. Foster adoption ministry. Handbell choir. Children's choir. Adult choir. Second Sunday, Soup and Sandwich.
Reconciling Ministries, Alcoholics Anonymous, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Imagine No Malaria, Society of St. Andrews, Miriam's Crumbs, Project Transformation, CSA and Community Market, Habitat for Humanity, Launchpad, Warner Elementary School, Guatemala, Sanctuary Movement, Trinity Community Commons, Pride Festival, LGBTQ Inclusion, East End Neighborhood Association, Kids Fest and Tomato Fest, Youth Mission Trip to Mountaintop, Fall Fest, Hop East, Our scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus is speaking to his disciples and indeed all of us. Listen here for the word of God. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it for me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Something I always regret about the, the writing of the Bible is we have so many of these instances, and Jesus mentioned some of these in the gospel reading today, where good things are done to people. I, and I always wonder what would happen in the Bible if there were some spin-offs and we found out what happened to the people who encountered Christ in these stories later on. What happened to the blind man? What happened to the woman at the well? What did these experiences with Christ due to them in the remainder of their lives. Um, fortunately, even though we don't have that in the Bible, we do have the church. And we have people, many people, who have stories of what their encounters with our church, which is to be the body of Christ in the world, has done to their lives and has enriched and filled and transformed. And a person who has uh, quite a story that um, I, I 
wanted to invite to come up and, and share is Joe Lee, who is our director of music and our resident seminarian, uh, and who has been here, I think, 10 times longer than I have been. So he's had a lot more time uh, to experience the, the power that comes with being in, in contact with the ministries of this church. So with that, I'll invite Joe to come up and share. Good morning. Good morning. Will you pray with me? Mother, Father, God, the hallowed one, our creator. Mother, Father, God, the child, our redeemer. Mother, Father, God, the spirit, the breath of wisdom and wind of understanding. Break open our hearts, we pray, and fill us with your light and your peace. Amen. By virtue of our presence this morning, nearly all of us are able to tell a powerful or touching story about how East End United Methodist Church has impacted and in some cases formed our faith journey and forged our spiritual path. I feel so lucky to have the opportunity today to come to you and share more about my spiritual journey, my faith journey with you today. I was born in Alabama in a small town called Florence. I grew up in a patriarchal church, in fact, where many of my most vivid early memories were formed. I can still remember the smells, hear the songs, see the beehive hairstyles, see all of the men in a suit. And I remember the excitement presented me by a blank membership card upon which to draw. I also feel the pinches of my mother's fingers when I misbehaved or the trepidation of being removed suddenly from the sanctuary when my father deemed I was being too noisy or too unruly. I remember not understanding the words of the songs, but wanting so desperately to sing along. To combat my lack of understanding, I would make up my own lyrics like Teddy Bear or Watermelon, and I would sing along at the top of my lungs. When I was three years old, I was old enough to understand when grown-ups were forming words into questions and young enough to believe that I knew the answers or at least young enough to enjoy the attention I received when I raised my hand. During a Sunday night service in 1979, the preacher was preaching and asked the congregation what I assume was a rhetorical question. I raised my hand. The preacher abruptly stopped his sermon he called on me, he invited me to make my way down to the pulpit, and he held me up in front of the pulpit, in front of everyone in the church. It's the first time I'd ever been in front of a large group of people, and that image actually is still firmly imprinted in my mind today. I opened my mouth and I sang, Jesus loves me. There was applause, I went back to my parents. The same people who applauded me that evening were the same ones that later taught me that solos were forbidden, choirs were unscriptural, instrumental music in the church was of the devil. I know though, as I sang Jesus loves me to this group of people that believe solos were fundamentally wrong, God was with me and God smiled upon me. I remember vividly my Sunday school class for three and four year olds, the way we sat in two straight lines that were parallel to the wall, facing the teachers. The teachers spoke about things that we didn't talk about at home, really one very specific thing that we didn't talk about at home, hell. As a three year old, I had no concept of heaven or hell. When the teachers asked, where does God live? The children around me all pointed to the ceiling, some shouting a word for it, others like me just pointing, I suddenly believed that God lived in the ceiling. Then the teacher followed up with, where does the devil live? I confidently pointed to the corner where the ceiling meets the two walls. If God lives in the ceiling, then suddenly the devil lives in the corner, I must have thought. I looked around, I was the only child who was still pointing up. Everyone else was pointing to the floor. Okay, I got it. God lives in the ceiling, the devil lives in the floor. I remember some frightening explanation of hell involving the word fire or pain. Who does that to three-year-olds? 
The people who do that to three-year-olds are the same people who punish nine-year-old me for recounting Shel Silverstein's The Unicorn when the class is asked what we know about Noah and the Ark. That tells 11-year-old me that the devil has a hold of my heart if I fall asleep while praying. Forces 12-year-old me to deliver a sermon while Mormons would not be joining us in heaven and causes adolescent me to pray my gay away nearly every night for years, cultivating an enormous sense of fear, doubt, guilt, and self-loathing into a child's heart. In hindsight, I know that God didn't answer this prayer because it wasn't a prayer that needed to be answered. God knew that I would understand this someday, and I now know that each time this prayer was uttered, God was with me and God smiled upon me. I'm so happy to report to you this morning that the years connecting these stories and today have been rich, healing, and life-giving. I am a white, gay, married, male, liberal, Christian, college-educated, middle-class, native speaker of English, Spanish as a second language speaker, middle-aged, able-bodied, and respected, at least in my context, for a career in music and music education that spans over two decades. I also prefer chocolate to vanilla ice cream. Last semester, I read that a truly intersectional theology is messy. It encompasses all the contradictions, differences, and difficulties of human experience. And that means that sometimes we won't find a direct line from A to B to ultimate truth. Instead, we will find questions, people who are nothing like us, and ideas that terrify and challenge us. This past summer, I took a United Methodist Doctrine class at Claremont School of Theology. There I learned more about a Wesleyan concept that Pastor Scott told me about the night that I came to East End Staff Paris Relations Committee and they voted to affirm my candidacy for ordained ministry in the United Methodist Church. The three forms of God's loving grace, prevenient grace, justifying grace, and sanctifying grace. In 2003, I was music directing a show for Circle Players. We were at TPAC at the time in the Johnson Theater. And our accompanist was a man many of you know named John Todd. John Todd was the organist here at East End on two separate occasions. And he came to me one night in rehearsal and he said, Joe, my church is looking for a new choir director. I really think you should apply. Oh, John, no, 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 no. That is not for me. I haven't been part of the church in many years. Uh, they wouldn't want me. I don't think that would really work out, but thank you so much for, for asking. A couple days later, we had another rehearsal. Joe, said John, we haven't yet received your application for choir director at East End. You really should apply. I think you would really, really enjoy it. John, come on. I told you, it's just not for me. I haven't been a part of a church in many years, and there's a reason for that, and I just don't think that I'm going to apply. Well, he kept trying to convince me, and he did. I applied. I came to my interview. The choir was there, even some of the folks that are behind me today. And we rehearsed down in the river to pray and one other piece, but I had so much fun. And after that night, I wanted the job. This is God's provenient grace. Sometimes God seeks us when we are not seeking God. And I returned to the party. My first couple weeks at East End, this was a job. I didn't have plans to become involved in the church life necessarily. I knew I was going to lead the music and I would do the rehearsals and I would come to the services and I would go about my life. Well, let me tell you, the second Sunday at East End, I used to sit on the chancel. Some of you will remember that. I was on the chancel and I would look out onto the congregation and I would stand on this enormous, dangerous box to conduct the choir. And 
I would uh, look out onto the congregation, the light would be shining through that beautiful Good Shepherd window. And I had stayed out all night. I had stayed up all night. I was not in a good state of mind to be at church. And I remember sitting there, the light was shining through the window. I was looking out at the congregation and I thought, East End United Methodist Church deserves a version of me that is in a better state of mind to do my work here. And that day I decided it would be so. And that is God's justifying grace. Sanctification, or the work of God's grace through the Word and the Spirit, is a process that has included the past 18 years and hopefully the next 18 years and beyond of hymns and songs, handbell rehearsals, complins, worship services, children's choirs, orchestra rehearsals, acoustic groups, prayers, retreats, youth music experience, sanctuary choirs, and more. Through God's sanctifying grace, we strive for a holiness and perfect Christian love that John Wesley believed could be obtainable in this lifetime, but most often made clear to us immediately upon death. As it was for most people, 2020 was an odd year for me. It was also a year filled with many blessings that included time to reflect, heal, grow, and bring my calling to serve God and her church into focus. My call to ministry began long ago, but due to the state of the United Methodist Church and specific statements in the Book of Discipline against LGBTQIAP inclusion in ministry, my call was on the back burner. With the knowledge I held previously, I, certain, I, I absolutely couldn't envision a path forward for me that would lead to ordination in the United Methodist Church. Over the past few years, I've had many experiences that have intensified my call, including Music and Arts Week at Lake Junaluska, the biennial convocation of the Fellowship of United Methodists in Music and Worship Arts, being asked to lead our staff in worship at a church staff retreat and representing our church staff on a trip to Guatemala where we built stoves and installed water filters for indigenous families. I have always had a keen awareness that God puts me where God wants me to be and I began feeling a strong desire to learn and do more so that I might serve my East End family and the world more deeply and more fully. I began dreaming of ways that I might serve as a minister of music and worship, as a deacon in the United Methodist Church, right here at East End United Methodist Church. I have nearly completed my first year of study at Claremont School of Theology, Pastor Scott's alma mater, and I couldn't be happier with my experience thus far. I've also recently learned about the safe harbor process that has been designed by United Methodist leaders in the West and initiated in the Pacific Northwest Conference so that queer people either in or pursuing ministry cannot be derailed or defrocked due to any aspect of their createdness. At this moment, I'm exploring Canada in the Pacific Northwest Conference's Safe Harbor Program. And Lord willing, in the creek don't rise, I'll be designated a certified candidate for ordained ministry in May of 2022. Since beginning seminary in January 2021, I've had the opportunity to reflect a great deal on my social location, especially in regards to ministry. According to the National Council on Family Relations, our social location is defined as the combination of factors including race, gender, social class, age, ability, religion, sexual orientation, and geographic location. In regards to ministry as a white male in my 40s, I have a powerful voice, especially, I would add, in our geographic location of the southeastern United States. The only thing that would make my voice stronger would be if I were straight. However, my creativeness allows me to truly empathize with those that have been told that God does not love them. No white, straight Christian man has ever been told these words. But I have. Some of you have. 
18 years ago, before I found my family at East End United Methodist, I didn't believe I belonged in a church. Now I know firsthand what it's like to find acceptance from a community of God when I believe that it wasn't possible and I want to help others find this acceptance too. In a denomination that still discriminates against me and many other people, I am able to embody the concept that God's love, acceptance, and grace is available to all of God's children. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, Amen. I think the best way to follow this is in a time of prayer. Um, we'll move into our time of sharing our uh, prayer concerns and our, our joys um, with our congregation. And I just, I'd like to start with a word of joy and gratitude for the, the ministry of Joe Lee within our congregation and for this congregation being the body of Christ to Joe. Does anyone have anything they'd like to share with their the congregation and with God this morning? For a sick neighbor uh, who's been going through a long-term illness, for, for Jim and Joy Rich, and for, for Toby, who's dealing with the loss of uh, their husband, um, and definitely for the, the people who are engaged in long-term caregiving, which is a ministry and a grind all to itself. All right, let's pray. God, we come to you on this beautiful, foggy day um, among uh, people who seek to to know you and and seek to serve you. God, we thank you for all of the ways you have allowed us to be the body of Christ in the world, the ways you have have inspired us uh, with your love and grace to, to serve others and to encourage others, and in so serving you and encouraging ourselves uh, to to be your hands and feet in the world. Uh, God, we ask your continued love and and blessing and presence in those who are suffering and and also those who are caring for them, uh, that that you may offer times of respite, times of healing, uh, and and just a break from the the general grind that comes with being in a long-term difficult situation. God, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for your presence in in everyone's lives. We thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you for all the days that you have made. And we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. One way we respond in gratitude to God's love and to the ministries that our church is able to offer is through our gifts, our tithes and offerings. Uh, if you'd like to give a gift during our service, you can do so by uh, with two ways. One, we do have a donation box uh, in the um, foyer area. And then we also have a QR code that is on the back of your bulletin. All, to use that, you just point your phone's camera at it and it'll put a link up at the top of your screen that you can press and it'll take you right to our giving page. So with that, we'll move into our time of giving uh, God's tithes and our offerings. Please remain standing and join us in our closing hymn. It is number 581 in your red hymnal, Lord, whose love through humble service.
Go forth from this place with the pride and the hope that comes with being a place where people do come into contact with Christ, knowing the power and transformation that can bring to the lives of whose Christ's presence touches. Bless you in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen.